The meaning of words in a given line, stanza, or entire piece of poetry undoubtedly plays a significant role in the feeling evoked within its readers. The sound of these words, though, play an important role as well. As in the notes of a musical piece, the sounds of words add emotion and oftentimes add meaning itself. Literary devices involving sound are most effective not in place of, but in conjunction with, meaning. A number of devices of sound may be utilized in poetry. Different consonants and vowels may be used to establish different effects based upon their sound. Euphony is a pleasant effect created by the sounds of words and their meaning. The most euphonious phrase in the English language has claimed to be cellar door. The most euphonious word? Syphilis. Cacophony is the opposite of euphony. It is the effect of words and their meaning creating dissonance, or a harsh effect. Examples of euphony and cacophony are found in the poem True Ease in Writing Comes from Art, Not Chance, by Alexander Pope. An example of euphony is found in lines 5 through 6 Soft is the strain when Zephyr gently blows, and the smooth stream in smoother numbers flows. The pleasing effect of the repeated S sounds in these lines, along with the idea of the gentle blowing of the wind and smooth flowing of the stream, create euphony. An example of cacophony is found in line 9. When Ajax strives, some rocks vast weight to throw. The difficulty of the consonants of Ajax strives, along with the described struggle of the mentioned Greek hero, contribute to the established cacophony. Then, to relate sound more closely to the meaning, there's onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is an attempt to represent something with a word that imitates the sound associated with it, like splash, drip, bang, or swoosh. Like the poet Dylan Thomas said, onomatopoeia adds so much to a poem that it can even make a deaf person feel like they have heard for the first time. Onomatopoeia often creates a kind of spell on, on the reader of a poem, for they add a great deal of description and life into the poem. Let us look at the poem Cynthia in the Snow by Gwendolyn Brooks to see a few examples of onomatopoeia. It shushes, it hushes, the loudness in the road. It flitter twitters and laughs away from me. It laughs a lovely whiteness and whitely whirls away, to be some other where, still white as milk or shirts, so beautiful it hurts. Hushes in line one and shushes in line two are two examples of onomatopoeia. For when sounded out, the shush and hush sound much like the sound one makes when trying to quiet someone, which is what it represents. Twitters in line four is another example, with the spoken word sounding a great deal like the noise that a bird makes. These examples also help to give a kind of spell-like pleasing effect to the poem. Alliteration and assonance are literary devices used to make poetry more pleasing to the ear. Alliteration is defined as a succession of similar sounds, more specifically, the repetition of the same consonant sound at the beginning of successive words. There are two types of alliteration. Initial alliteration occurs when the repetition of sounds occurs at the beginning of words within prose. A stanza of poetry by Witter Biner contains examples of initial alliteration. If I were only dafter, I might be making hymns to the liquor of your laughter or to the lacquer of your limbs. In this example, liquor, laughter, lacquer, and limbs are examples of initial alliteration. Internal or hidden alliteration, occurs when the repetition of consonant sounds occurs within words. Milton uses this type of alliteration in his description of the gates of hell. On a sudden open fly, with impetuous recoil and jarring sound, the infernal doors and on their hinges great, harsh thunder, that the lowest bottom shook of Erebus. Infernal doors, jarring, there, great, harsh, thunder, are the examples of alliteration using the R sound. Assonance, like alliteration, is the repetition of a specific sound. However, assonance is the repetition of a vowel sound. This can occur initially, like all the awful audries, 
or internally in this excerpt from a poem by Edward Spencer. Her goodly eyes like sapphires shining bright, her forehead ivory white. In this one, the long eye is the internal assonance. These examples of literary devices are only a few ways that sound is used to help add to poems and literature. The only way to experience the many effects of sound is to read some poetry yourself.